Okay, I think we are live. All right, welcome back everybody for part five of this color pencil study in texture. We are continuing the avocados and we'll probably keep working on this project for another couple of weeks yet. Um, if you're new to color pencil, it's a very slow medium. So we've uh, already done five days on this particular project and um, it's just a very tedious but very uh, enjoyable medium. So if you have not um, done any work in color pencil, feel free to watch the last four episodes on my channel. Uh, you can use any color pencil. I'm going to be using an assortment of different brands. If you head over to my website at jhillfineart.com forward slash tutorials, you will see all the tools and supplies that I'm going to be using with this project. Um, you do not need to have all of those particular supplies, but it's just so you know what I'm using. And also you can download the free reference photo and the line drawing so you can follow along with this project with me. So anyways, um, again, I'm Joanna Hill and I am going to be showing you how I create realism with color pencils today. So last week we worked on the avocado seed and we still have a little bit more work on that to do yet but i'm going to move on to some other parts i think today we are going to work on the top half or actually no i apologize we are going to work on the left side surrounding the avocado seed because that's where i left off last week and i'm just going to try and get that close to being as finished as i can and then we're going to move to the top half so let's go ahead and get started. If you have questions, go ahead and just put a comment in the chat. Feel free to hang out and, and chit chat with me as we color. All right, so I left off with doing this outer ring. I am working from my tablet, which has my reference photo on it. And I recommend doing using a tablet or a phone or computer screen because you'll get a much better uh, image to work from if you're doing realism. So it's always important to have a nice high quality photo so you can get all the uh, details that you want. So I'm gonna start off by using, this one is a sort of a brown violet. This is from the Polychromos color pencil line. This is an oil-based pencil and I like the oil-based pencils for doing these small, tiny details because they keep a much sharper point than some of the wax based ones, which are a little bit softer, but I like adding small details with this one. It's not quite dark, so I'm gonna grab a few other pencils here. So I hope you all are doing a good job on your project. If you're following along, I would love to see how you're progressing. And you know, if you always have problems or questions, feel free to email me. Okay, so I've got the in blue indigo and I am just going along this outside edge to get a nice, very thin line to represent that crease where the seed sort of sits inside the avocado. I'm just gonna take this all the way around. Anywhere that I see this sort of real dark, fine hairline um, shadow for me, I'm just gonna color that in. So I set myself up pretty good last time. So there isn't a whole lot of work yet to do. Up in this area, we do have some work and I need to adjust my camera. I apologize here. There's a little bit of, let's see. Oop, that's too bright. Let me uh, adjust this real quick. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can actually see what I'm doing. I had everything together, but 
always something. Okay, hopefully that, hopefully you can see that okay. Okay. There we go. That's better. Okay. All right. So I set myself up pretty good last time. As I'm looking at my reference photo, I've got my values in the right spots. And I feel like I'm missing a little bit of some color in here. I, I'm looking at it and I'm seeing some more orange tones. And I'm just going to go ahead and add those in. And I also want to, the color on this on my screen is looking a little off. Let me go ahead and fix that too. Let's see. My color correction is just a little bit off. And we'll fix that brightness. Well, I didn't really do a whole heck of a lot. I'm not going to mess with it too much. It is what it is. Okay. All right. Well, I apologize about that. It's kind of a, uh, it's just going to work. It'll have to work. Okay. So back to what I was saying in this area right here, we have some sections where the avocado has like some uh, almost like cracks in it. So we need to make we need to make those look like they are three dimensional. So my highlight is going to be the surface, and then which we've already got that bright yellow, and then we've got some of these darker shadowing right here, and this is sort of representing where those cracks are we just need to make them a little bit more dynamic i guess you could say so i'm just gonna add in some more shadowing here and i'm just following where all those values are You don't want to overdo it with the darks, but some of them have slightly more of a darker value than others. And I'm just following along with my reference. So I'm looking at where the darks are and it's sort of in this linear pattern. So I'm using sort of a straight line application. Now on some of these, it's a little too dark, but that's okay. I can just raise that value up a little bit with a lighter pencil. And I'm going to use this cream yellow. And I'm just gonna go right on top. And this will help to soften it and blend it a little bit as well. You don't always need to have the odorless mineral spirits to, to blend. You know, you can just use the pencils to blend as well.
And there's some orange tones. I'm going to go ahead and add those in as two. Maybe more of a more of a this one's called sanguine. It's a little bit more of a muted reddish orange color. And I'm just gonna put a few hints of that. in with my white these little tiny details is really what helps to create good detail and um, you know if you're doing the realism as it really sort of helps make your pictures by adding these tiny details so when people look at it they're just kind of like ooh, that looks nice and they just notice all these little things happening and they, that's what wows them. Although I'm not wowing myself currently at this moment. Just a matter of going back and forth between the values, adjusting your color shifts. If you think about how value works and imagine that these so it's almost like there's holes well there, there are holes these are cracks in the avocado so if you have a, an understanding on how lighting works if you're looking at like a box shape you know the lights coming down at the avocado so the surface of the avocado which is facing the light source is going to be the brightest and so as it goes into the crevices, it's going to go deeper in value and the color saturation is going to be a little bit stronger. So we've gone from this light yellow color and then as it's going into the cracks, it starts to get a little bit warmer, a little bit darker. And then the real deep cracks are going to be your darkest. And so since we're using the color, you know, the yellow family, you know, that we're kind of going in from pale yellow to a warm yellow to a more um, deeper rusty orange color and then into the brown. And these are so small, it's really kind of hard to squeeze all of those different colors in, but you just do your best. We're just more or less suggesting the idea of what's going on. It doesn't have to be perfect. There, I think that looks okay. Now I am gonna take a little bit of odorless mineral spirits just to soften that even more. It's a little bit too stark. And I'm going in with just a very small brush, very little mineral spirits because I don't wanna remove anything. I just want to soften. And this also helps sort of clean up your lines also. I'm still following the same 
directional lines also. I'm not kind of scribbling all over the place because I don't want to move the shapes. I want them, I just want to keep everything where it belongs and just soften it. happy with that. All right, I'm going to go and add some more reflective highlights here on the side that I'm noticing. I want some of these to be a little bit stronger, so I'm going to go over it with the white. This is the Derwent Drawing Chinese White Pencil. Really nice for bringing out the highlights again. There's a lot more orange tones on this side as well, down below. But orange uh, in the color pencils is so translucent, it really needs this opaque white underneath it for them to show up. So I'm going to bring out this sort of fluorescent orange color. This one is cadmium orange. I'm just going to go right on top of that white. And that'll give me a little bit more of that orange color that I'm looking for. Now, even though this is sort of a pale yellow color and outside is, is green, we do see some green in here, which I do have a little bit of green. I could probably add a little bit more, but when you have a reflected light and you're trying to figure out what color to use it um, or what color to to make it the reflected light you want to take into consideration the the local color of the object that you're coloring in this case this is sort of a brownish warm brown avocado seed and the reflection is a yellow uh, yellowish greenish you know, avocado. So those two colors are going to be coming together to kind of create a new color. And so the orange is sort of is coming from the warmth of the seed because there's a lot of red in this brown avocado seed. And so the red and the yellow tones are, are pretty much the ones that are closest together. And that's what's creating this sort of orange hue. Although we still see yellow, we still see a little bit of green but you always want to take into consideration uh, those colors, that, that color relationship. And that's true for a lot of other, you know, if you have, if you're working on a still life or something and you have one object that's of the color red, another object that's green, light bounces between the two objects and they share a color relationship. And so that's going to change uh, each one is going to sort of share a little bit of each other's color. So just adding on, you know, its neighboring color onto an object and vice versa, it's going to make it a little bit more realistic because that's what we see in, in real life. Best way to practice that is really just observing from life, you know, setting, setting up a still life in your studio or just, you know, if you're sitting somewhere, you know, just look at things and try to find areas where the color is being shared with something else that's nearby. That's what's going to help a lot. For the longest time, like I, that was my goal is I wanted to be better at understanding color, understanding how light works with color. And I'm still not a professional at it at all, or not, I'm not an expert. You know, but I, I do my best and I, I'm much more comfortable with how I understand it now. You know, I know enough to get by or maybe enough to be dangerous. I don't know. 
but it's very it's a very interesting topic and there's a lot of YouTube videos that you can watch where people um, can really explain it much more than much better than I can but it's a fascinating topic and it's definitely worth having in your knowledge when it comes to art because that's really going to boost your artwork and it's going to make it even better when you can get lighting and color right at the same time it's really just really makes it better it's hard to talk and, and color at the same time all right i said i was going to be done fiddling with this all right, done filling with that part. Okay, so I'm gonna go, mm, what I wanna do next? You know, let's just jump up here. We'll just do that. We got a lot of work to be done on this top part of the avocado. And if I remember correctly, for the darks we were using pine green and there was a different color that I was using, chromium oxide green, I believe it was. But I'm going to pull out a few different greens because there's a lot of greens going on in here. And we're definitely going to be needing our white color pencil and probably even some cool grays. So I want more of a blue tone gray because we see a lot of that highlight. It's not quite white. It's more like a, like a very pale gray green but I'm using the cool grays because they are blue based and that will help sort of go with the coolness of the green. Okay so I think what we'll do is we're going to start over here. So I'm just going to move this over and get some water. Now, I know when we first started, I wanted to really focus on maybe fixing that. I'm still not quite happy with it. I went too dark too fast and I lost a lot of my little highlights. So what we can do is actually I'll introduce you to a new, a new product. So this is colored pencil powder. Oh, that's the blend. We want color pencil titanium powder and color pencil touch-up texture. So these come from a brand called Brush and Pencil. They make these particular items specifically for color pencil. And what this is, it's just titanium powder. Oh gosh, I think it's actually glued shut. Oh no. Yep, something spilled on it and it's completely just glued shut. Um, well, we may not be able to actually use this tonight. I'm gonna have to figure out how to get that open because that's really on there. Oh, yep. Okay, well, anyways, you would mix these two together into, into a paste and you can paint on top of your color pencil piece to get back some of those really bright highlights or you can use it for highlights in like in somebody's eye or whiskers on a cat you know you can use it for all sorts of different stuff so this is what i would use to touch that up but since it's um glued shut we're gonna have to figure out maybe i'll do that next time so we'll just go back to plan b and just start with working on this section here but it's a great product. I use it a lot. So we were going to take this section by section. So right now, as I'm looking at this section, there's a lot of darks that I'm missing. So I'm just gonna go straight in with the pine green. And as, I, as I'm observing the texture on this you can see that there's a lot of like bumps it's almost like ripples or waves 
So I want to actually sort of kind of hand draw each of those little bumps to start creating that texture. I want to keep this value, which is what I have previously, so I can use that as the highlight. So I'm just gonna go in and just start maybe just coloring in like little C, C shapes. This will be a very, very tedious section. And so I'm just kind of looking for areas where there's a lot of this dark green versus a lot of the reflected light, which is what this is now, what this value is, is the reflected light coming from, you know, whatever's that direction. And it's just got this irregular outside edge where, because it's still bumpy, you're still gonna see dips and valleys. So I want, I don't want a straight dark line because that's going to make it look like a cartoon. We don't want that. And I'm also taking note also too of, you know, how close together are these little bumps. As it gets towards the top here, they become a little less, um, they, they become smaller and a little bit more tightly grouped together as well and I'm starting to see more highlights, less green. So I'm gonna go with my light gray color. That'll be a little bit more of the highlight. And I'm just gonna mix with that green underneath to make more of that gray green color. If you're working on watercolor paper or something that's not heavily textured, you would probably want to put down a light pale green first in this whole, this whole section and then add in your dark. So you would wanna work from light to dark where I'm working on pastel matte, which I can go dark to light sometimes or most of the time. So you do have to be strategic about what combination of pencil you, you're using and what uh, how what system you're placing them in, like what um, what order you're placing in. That's the word I'm looking for. I get so scatterbrained, I can't do dark to light or light to dark, you know, and, and be consistent because I'll you know, I'll, I'll draw something and I'm like, oh, I need to, you know, I made that too dark or, you know, I want to go back and add something else that I, it gets too, too much to try and stay light to dark. That's why I can never do watercolor. You know, you have to work light to dark with watercolor and I just can't do that. <laughs> it just doesn't work for me. But you just take it one small section at a time and you just keep working it. You just trust the process and you just mimic the best you can. Now this is going to get a lot darker also, but I'm starting to see some other greens as it gets around here. The greens start to become a little warmer as it gets towards these highlights. Still keeping with the same pattern, that's that same sort of C-shape idea. Because the texture is still very, you know, it's consistent throughout the whole avocado. but. The values and, and the colors will change depending on where it is, you know, in the light source. As it's hitting the light, um, the highlights are pretty pale, but 
you know, as it gets to this sort of mid-tone between these darks and the highlight, they're a little bit warmer in color, a little bit more saturated. Very, very subtle, but still you can tell a difference. I'm always looking at my reference photo. It's anywhere that I'm drawing. That's where my eyes are because I want to make sure that I'm in the right section. Now, let's see. I'm going to switch to more of a grayish earth tone. This one is green or earth green from Polychromos. little bit more of a gray green. I, I really like this color. I use it a lot in most of my drawings just because, I don't know, it's just like a perfect grayish green color. And I need to go much darker in that section. Let's see. I'm going to pull out a different color. I need something that's dark. Not going quite black. We want maybe, maybe like a blue, blue green. Deep cobalt green. Let's see what this one looks like. It's definitely more of a bluer green, but it's not quite dark enough, but we'll use it for the moment. I might even mix it with the dark indigo. keep sniffling. I don't know why I'm sniffling all of a sudden. My allergies must be coming back. So this section right here, I don't see a lot of that C-shaped sort of pattern. I see a little bit of it, but not too much. It just kind of looks like a blotted concoction of greens. And I'm just going to continue on moving this around. There's some real heavy darks on this side. I'm not being as tight knit with my small circles. I'm sort of letting them get a little sloppy. That way I can leave some gaps to kind of mimic that sort of bumpy, lumpy texture. darker right up here. There's a, more of those kind of goldish, orangish colors in this section right here, so I'm going to leave that alone for the moment. I'm going to go in with the... Um, no, I'm not going to use the gray. I need to pop out some little highlights, but I need more of a yellow tint. So I'm going to use this cream yellow. Now I'm kind of going around where I put the darks. 
just to sort of mimic that bumpy texture, but I just want them to be more yellow. struggle to find something to something interesting to talk about while I'm on here. I'm not much of a talker in general. Um, I'm, I guess by nature, I'm pretty introverted. And ask, ask any one of my friends or family members. I would rather listen to somebody else talk about something, which is funny because I'm starting a YouTube channel and I should be talking. <laughs> Well, I can take you through a day in the life of a full-time artist, which I'm trying to be a full-time artist. I, my typical work week is I, what I do for a living is most of the time I teach art lessons and I have a few students that I see. Um, probably, I probably teach a lesson, you know, you know, one or two times a week, you know, sometimes more, sometimes, sometimes less. And uh, I'll actually go to my students' home and teach them different mediums. And then when I'm not doing that, I am either prepping for lessons or sometimes I'll teach a workshop at our local art associations here in town. And We'll, I'll, I'll usually do like a two-day workshop where we're doing either a color pencil lesson or a, you know a drawing lesson or painting depending on what the workshop is about and uh, usually I do those in the fall and the winter time summertime uh, a lot of the people that like to take the workshops a lot of them are snowbirds so they'll they'll fly home for the summer and uh, they'll come back in the fall and the winter and take take workshops. So that's usually what I do. Um, and other than that, I work on projects. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll help people design a, a website for miscellaneous things. Um, or I've done a couple logo designs for people So I, I guess you could set, you can sum me up as a freelance artist. So I do several different things, you know, all, all creative, all art related. So every, I, I would say every month, it's my work schedule looks completely different. Some, you know, summertime, it's pretty slow. But then, you know, every now and then I'll just get like a big project that takes me, you know, we weeks to work on or or something. So right now I today when I woke up, I had my coffee, which I usually do. I wake up or I've been trying to wake up early with my husband. He gets up at about 530 to go to work. And um, so once he gets up. I'll, uh, I'll get up shortly after he does and we'll have coffee and I get his coffee ready to go, kick him out the door, and then I usually start my day with either um, going out for some exercise, uh, making sure I take time to read my Bible, do my devotions, um, and I'll get to work in my studio to work on a project that I'm currently working on. So tomorrow I'm going to see one of my students and we have been studying how to paint clouds and we work or we are working in um, oh I can't think and draw at the same time. We are working in oil paint, alkyd oils, which I've talked about several times over the last couple of weeks and we are painting clouds in oil. So we've done a couple reference photos um, 
and just really kind of studied painting. I'm, I'm not a scenery painter and it's a uh, it's always fun when the student challenges the teacher because I I always told myself I'd never paint scenery. One, I'm not a great, I'm not a huge fan of scenery paintings. They're beautiful, but I've, it's just not something that I enjoy doing. But I think it's because I found and discovered that I really stink at it. <laughs> and so it's been a challenge to really teach myself how to do it and help my student to also capture um, scenery and um, so it's just kind of fun learning together and uh, we just we have been set, having such a great time doing that and um, so I've been working on painting clouds today so I worked on the painting that she and I started and Tomorrow we are going to keep working on that and depending on how far we get we may start a new project or we may pick a different set of clouds to work on and uh, we'll go from there. So I probably worked on my cloud painting for several hours today and I don't think I'm going to show y'all because it's it's not very good. It's pretty embarrassing. So maybe when I get some practice in, I'll, I'll share my my beginning and after. But or maybe I should just go ahead and show you. Okay, I'll, I'll just show you. So this is what I have so far. Let me zoom out here. Sorry for the glare. To me, it kind of looks like Bob Ross Mountains or like cotton balls. Not very cloud-like. So I need to make them fluffy. So I'm, I'm working on making them fluffy. So my thought is, you know, this is pretty much dry already. The alkyd oil dries pretty quick. I'm going to do some glazing tomorrow and just keep working it. Just keep working, you know this this idea i am working from a reference photo and then down here is going to be some marsh scenes we have some wonderful marsh scenes where we live and there's just wonderful greens and stuff so i'm going to try and capture something that resembles you know our local area which i did the, the reference photo that i um took a, i took the i took the reference photo locally so that's where the, the picture that i'm working from but anyways, it's it's definitely not um, it's not fantastic, but it's okay. You know, I'm enjoying it. I'm having a great time learning. It's definitely a lot harder than I originally had anticipated clouds being, <laughs> and I just major kudos to people that can do this because yeah, it's it's not as easy as it looks. So. But it's fine. I am enjoying it. So after that, I uh, I worked on some some drawing, and I'm currently working on some flower drawings for my friend uh, for her tattoo. She's got a half sleeve of flowers already, and she's got a blank space about you know, on the underside of her arm that she wants filled in. So I'm working on some different flowers and I'm gonna be creating a line drawing for her tattoo artist. And then um, I'll make a colored version of it too um, with how she wants it to look. So that's a really fun project. Uh, I can't wait to see that one done. So that's pretty much what I did today and I did a little reading. I'm trying to be better at not watching as much TV throughout the day. Um, I really want to, I mean, I, I watch a lot of TV like while I'm working, but I, I wanna try and start taking time out of my day to just read more. I've got a lot of art books that I've gotten that I haven't, even opened um so i want to 
I got a whole bunch from the, the library sale last year with, you know, good intentions to, to read them all, of course. Always good intentions. <laughs> so currently, anyways, I, I'm reading um, one of James Gurney's books. It's the Color and Light uh, book that he wrote. Uh, I did not get that at the library sale. I did order that from his website and it is an autographed copy and he even drew this cool little dinosaur drawing on the inside of the cover which was super awesome i was pretty excited to get that in the mail um but anyways yeah you can order that from his website and uh i'm using the wrong colors so here. i need to go back to the gray and that book i'm, I'm almost done with it actually and that has been a very valuable um, book that I think if you are a serious artist, everybody should have this book because it's just like, it's almost like a textbook, but it's not so overwhelming with, with information that it's like, you know, a big snooze fest. It's just a very straightforward sort of synopsis about the fundamentals of art and um, how it relates to like painting and, and physics and you know uh, just all sorts of different things and I would just I would really recommend that book because I've I've learned a lot from his YouTube channel I've learned a lot from reading his books um, so yeah that's been fun so I, I sat on my porch during while I was eating some lunch and I sat outside in the 100 degree weather <laughs> that we had today because I'm crazy and I love hot weather and humidity. <laughs> but, uh, so I sat and read that for a little bit. And that was, that was pretty much my day. And then I, I took a trip out to the grocery store and I got some stuff to make dinner. We had chicken parmesan, which was very tasty. And, uh, and now I'm here chatting with you fine people. So it's, uh, it's been a great day. And tomorrow will be another great day painting. All right, I'm gonna, so I pulled out some of these highlights just to kind of create that, um, that sort of bubble effect with the white. And I'm gonna go on top of this white with the earth green or green earth, you want to, whatever you want to call it, just to tone that white down and give it a green hue. I think we need to go darker as well. But that's pretty much a typical work day for me. Yesterday I finished a sip and paint painting for a sip and paint event that my friend and I are gonna be teaching next month, um, which I think I did promise to give you guys that information. So it's going to be August 10th, or I'm sorry, not August 10th, September 10th from one to four at Watermelon, Watermelon Creek Vineyard. You can check them out on their website and you can get the details. They are serving a meal with this sip and paint and they have very tasty wine and very tasty food. And you get to paint at the same time and have a good time. So if you're local to Southern Georgia, Southeast Georgia, definitely go check that out. There is limited seating. I think there's enough space for about 40 people and it does fill up pretty quick. So, so we are doing, um, whim, I guess you'd call them whimsical, but it's a starry night inspired pumpkin fall leaf painting. It's very Van Gogh-esque. It was a lot of fun painting that one. But I'll, I'll eventually have all that information on my website, too, under the Events tab. All right, I'm going to soften that out. Now, I am not putting this brush back into the Odorless Mineral Spirits. 
this has a little bit of residue on there already, so it's just enough to kind of soften. I don't want to completely blend this out and lose some of the texture that I just drew, but I do want to soften. This is a synthetic hog hair bristle brush. I use a couple different ones. I use these ones the most, I think, because it really has some good um, strength in the bristles. They're very stiff and it kind of helps push the pigment around. So it's, it's just a, a personal preference. You can use whichever one works for you. Don't forget the glitter. What glitter? I don't think we're doing glitter for the sipping paint. That would just be a giant mess. <laughs> We are doing metallics on there, which it is on there. You just can't tell in the photo, but um, it's a really cool painting. I was uh, looking at pictures of Gustav Klimt's work. If you're not familiar with his work, um, his famous painting is called The Kiss, or one of his famous paintings. And he uses a lot of metallic gold in, in his paintings. I don't know if it was gold leaf. I'm not familiar with the actual history of his particular work, but I've seen pictures of it. And so I was thinking about him and Van Gogh when I was creating the, the pumpkin piece. And it was very, I was very inspired to do something a little bit different than I usually do. Okay, let's see. So... I'm going to start going more dark in here. I'm starting to lose a little bit of the shape. This value in here is way too light. So I'm just going to start. It also looks a little thin. So I may not, you don't see a lot of the sort of C shape or that, you know, little hump texture here in this section because it's quite dark on the reference photo. So I'm just going to give it just a, just a plain coat of this dark green. And there's still a lot of the paper that I can see also. So I want to kind of give it a better base coat than what it had. So this one is the deep cobalt green. It's a little bit of a bluer green. So I'm gonna use this one and then I'm gonna switch to probably um, the chromium oxide green, which is a little bit more of the olive green color. But I want to capture the shape of this dark shadow area. So Janet, how are you doing today? I hope Jimmy's feeling better. switch over to that oxide green. Oh, sorry, this one is um, chromium green opaque. It's more of an olive green. It's not as dark as we need it, but it does have enough of those brown hues to create the correct color that I want, but we can darken that up a little bit with some sepia or some black.
I am very excited. I think I found a new printer that I didn't even know existed in town before. I'm in the midst of having some prints made of a piece of artwork that I had done for, for my sister, uh, for my brother-in-law, for her husband. And um, now this one's the chromium oxide green. And um, it was a color pencil drawing on pastel matte and it was just really difficult to get a good print of it because of the texture of this paper. And then um, the scan that I had originally done, I accidentally saved over it with a bad edit. And so I was able to get the painting back on loan to rescan it, but it's been sort of sandwiched into the mat board and the back board or the, the backing of it. And so I can't take it apart without destroying the mat. So um, I have been trying to use my camera to get a good photograph of it, but my camera just wasn't quite doing the trick. So I took it to a local printer that I've used several times and they they were not successful they couldn't quite get it either and um they don't do photography so they had recommended me to another photographer in town that i didn't even know was there and this is the sepia i'm going in with the sepia to just bring in more of these dark little um textures they're like little going back in with that little c c shape little bumps but anyways so back to the prints um oh okay good i'm glad that he's he's feeling feeling better it sounds like he went to amelia island that's a nice place did you guys do anything fun while you were down there did you guys go to the beach So anyways, um, I went and took the picture up to this new photographer and um, he was very, very knowledgeable and he for sure was like, yes, I can absolutely get you a really good uh, print of this. And they also print G clays at the same time. So like, it was like a one-stop shop for me. So um, I am currently waiting to get a sample piece from him and I'm very excited because if this works out really well um, I won't have to send away for my G clay prints anymore which is really nice so anytime I have a new art piece I can just have him take a photograph of it and he edits it it's all included in his pricing and um, I don't have to do any, any of the hard work anymore I would love to but um, I'm not an expert at doing editing, so it's worth paying him to do it. So that's that's been a huge like weight lifted off of my shoulders this week. Yep, fingers crossed. Okay, so I've added in this dark section. I need to stretch it a little more that way. And you can see that I'm not getting every single bump. I'm just sort of bricklaying, you know, little black spots essentially. And I'm just going back and forth between the values, going back and forth between light and dark, dark and light. But I'm focusing just in this area. Like I'm not worried about anything over here just yet. That's that's a, that's a future me problem. I'm just looking for the darkest dark spots and just putting in the suggestion of that texture. But I had to have that initial foundation, that initial gradient down. So I'm actually gonna switch to a softer bristle brush. This one is just a synthetic Taclon. This is a number six scrubber. 
It's a Hobby Lobby brand, nothing special. And I got a little too much of my... The Taclon bristles will hold on to more mineral spirits than the hog hair bristle brushes do. So do be careful when you are switching between brushes. Oh, I think I hear thunder. Oh, I hope I get a good storm. I love sitting outside and watching the storm. It's like my husband and I's favorite thing to do is sit out in the garage with the garage open or the porch and just sit out there and and watch the storm and the lightning and it's just so fun. We used to live in Washington for about 17 years. We He was stationed out there and we moved here, you know, about three years ago to Georgia. But when we were living out in Washington, uh, like, yes, it's a very rainy state, but it's not like your typical rain. It, it's like a drizzly kind of mediocre rain at best. Like, like you're living in Scotland or something, you know, it's just like a mist. Like it never really rains, you know, it might like downpour for like 20 minutes on occasion, but like you, you never would hear any lightning. No lightning, no thunder. I think the entire time we were out there, we might have gotten lightning and thunder. Um, I don't know, maybe a handful of times. I could probably count on my fingers how many times in the 15 years, you know. Although they had some gnarly wind storms out there, you know. We lived in this one, this one place, this, this rental house. That's another story, that rental house. But anyways, while we were living there, um, the, the wind storms were so wicked and you could just hear cracking of trees, you know, falling down, you know, in the nearby woods around you. So that was like, that was a little scary, you know, wondering if you're going to have a tree fall on you in the middle of the night. Although it was kind of exciting at the same time. I know we're nuts. But anyways, when we moved here, we were so excited for hurricane season because like we're originally from Virginia. We, we grew up in the Virginia Beach area. And um, hurricane season was always just exciting. One, you got out of school. Two, you know, it was like an excuse to go wander around town and see all the damage the next day and, you know, play board games, you know, if the power went out, things like that. So like, thankfully, you know, our home was spared a lot. You know, I don't remember having anything super terrible happen growing up. But anyways, um, we were very excited to uh, to come back here to the East Coast. And, and now we have thunderstorms like on a regular basis. And it's just so wonderful. So exciting. And I'm not being sarcastic. <laughs> Okay, I think I like how that is looking. It kind of looks like, um, also kind of reminds me of like hammered metal. So like this same technique, you know, because it reminds me of hammered metal, you know, if I was drawing something with that pattern, this is probably the same technique that I would use. Um, although hammered metal is more of like a bowl shape, this is more convex, you know, this is kind of like a, a bubble shape, so it would just be the reverse. Um, but same con concept, you know, you're just taking it one step at a time, paying attention to the values, the color of those values, and just slowly building up that process. I need some more water. Okay, so it's about 8.05. We've got probably another half hour, 40 minutes. So I'm going to focus on the bright highlight because that's pretty much the big prominent um, object that we see on this part of the avocado. I need a longer pencil. This thing is super short now. If I can find one. There we go. I'm going to switch that out for a bigger one. I buy these white pencils, the um, the Derwent Drawing Chinese White. I buy these in in bulk because I go through them so much. 
So this one has a very different pattern than what we were just doing. So this one, whoo, do you, I wonder if you hear that thunder. I apologize if the power goes out or the internet cuts out, um, that could happen. But anyway, so back to the highlight here. Um, it's almost like, it's almost like in a spiral. Like if you were to draw little like squashed circles or abstract, you know, blotchy shapes, it's almost kind of like in a ring where it gets more diffused the further away from the light, from the highlight. So it's more compact in the center because that's where the highlight is strongest. And so because the light is hitting this and it's starting, the, the form is moving away from the highlight, you know, it's starting to curve around the avocado, it's only hitting just the tops and the sides of the bumps as it moves farther away because, you know, it's curved. So when it's curving, it's not hitting the light source directly. So we get more of a concentration of highlights here in the center and then it starts to just dissipate and become more scattered as it moves away. So that's something that we want to keep in mind and mimic that same pattern. So I'm gonna take my highlight, I'm gonna zoom in for you. And let's see if I can get that to focus. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I'm going to just almost kind of make like a rosette kind of pattern. You know how we all started making little roses with just little lines going around and around and kind of brick laid them? That's exactly what I'm just going to do here. And I'm going to get a little sloppy with it. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, maybe some of them connect a little bit. But now that I'm sort of starting to get away, you can see where my foundational layer, where I sort of mapped out where the highlight is the strongest with this pale green underneath, and then it starts to get darker right here. So as I'm getting towards that outer darker ring, I want these to be more spaced out. And just kind of make up the little shapes, little irregular shapes. And if there's any particular highlight that really stands out to you, usually your eye will pick up on things that are kind of obvious. You want to capture those accurately because that's what's going to help pull the drawing together. You know, if there's an obvious shape that, you know, really jumps out, you want to capture that. Now back here, we could go ahead and draw some of this highlights too, since we've got the white pencil in our hand. Now this pattern back here that wraps around the back side is a little more, um, It's a little bit more elongated. So back to sort of doing those waves, you know, that long C sharp or C shape. When you have an object that has texture that is round, like think of an orange, how it's got those dimples, they're all sort of round. Or um, 
in like this avocado, you know, has sort of these round, bumpy, sort of like alligator skin. But anyways, when you have a, like a circular pattern or, or just sort of a pattern that's round-ish, as it goes around the object, if the object is round, those shapes will flatten out because they're going away from the viewer. So it's like, you know, if it's right in front of you, you know, you see a perfect circle. But as it moves away and goes around and around, that circle starts to flatten out and flatten out until it's just like a line. And then so that's, uh, you know, a very short perspective lesson in about five seconds. <laughs> so think about that, you know, you don't want polka dots when you're creating, uh, when you're creating texture, you know, to make it look more realistic around those outside edges, make sure that you're using sort of flattened uh, C shapes like we have here. And of course, you'll always have a few few shapes that you know kind of go against some of those rules, but that's what makes it organic and, and you know I think the best some of the best fruit to draw would be like ugly ugly fruit. They're so like gnarly looking, but they make really good still life subjects, you know. Okay, so we've got the highlights in here and I'm happy with how they are now. So now what I wanna do is I wanna create the shadows that go on the edges because all of these are raised up bumps. So they're three dimensional, so they have sides. So I'm going to pick out, I'm gonna use this sort of mid-tone. This is the chromium green opaque. And I'm going to use that as my shadow side. And I'm going to start back sort of in the center. Let me get my camera to focus again. I don't know why it's not focusing. Now I don't want to make these cartoony and have shadows all the way around them. Just where it's sort of going away kind of sporadically I am looking at my reference photo and following along which side of these white dots which side of them have a shadow or has the shadow There definitely are some color changes as far as uh, some of these greens as it gets around, but I can go back in. I just want to get the values in so I can get my, my road map going. dark that starts to come in between those highlights too. I even see a few little flecks of some brown ochre colors a little bit, just here and there. So I can just kind of pop those in.
And I can take the same green, just gonna break up some of this. Let's see, it's a little bit of a lighter green to break up some of these white lines. All these little shapes have a gradient going from light to medium to dark, or light medium to light, light to dark to medium, and you just have to really look at where they, where those are. And that's why it helps to have a, a computer screen or something that you can zoom in on so you can see what direction that gradient goes. You know, if the shadow side is on the left here, you know, it's the shadow's strongest right behind the ridge, and then it starts to fade to the light as it goes away from the highlight. And then it sort of repeats on the next one. It's like performing surgery. Very, very um, teeny tiny. Let's see, what else can I uh, ramble on about here? I keep hearing that storm and I'm like so excited to, to go watch it. I hope it's a good one. It's important not to rush, even though I'm excited to go watch the storm. I'm not going to rush this. You gotta take, take your time. So I, I'm seeing some mint green colors too, because like I, I did the highlights. Oop. Nope, I got a little bit of a, that's all right, that can be fixed. That'll buff. Um, my highlights are kind of white, but they're reflecting more of that sort of grayish, bluish color. My light gray that I have will work, but I think I want more of a bluer tone. So I'm going to find like a mint green color. But it still has to be light, something pastel. Let's see what I have. I think we used this one before. This one was the middle verdig verdigree. That's how I'm pronouncing it correctly. I don't know. I'm going to go right on top of my white highlights with this. I think I need a little bit of something like a little bit of a darker teal for this mid-tone. I know this looks completely random how I'm putting this in here, but I am trying to be conscious about where I'm placing my colors and my values. I know it's not going to be perfect, but I, I think I can get pretty close. Texture is hard. It's a hard thing to capture, but it's uh, if you are up for the challenge, it sure is a lot of fun. I think I want some more of this pine green color. Really sort of add some drama to this. Oh, here comes the rain. Okay. All right, 
I think I have a pretty good start. And I'm just gonna blend this out a little bit. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use my hog hair bristle brush. I want a little bit more pushing power, I guess you could say. And I'm just gonna soften. I'm gonna work my way from the inside out. I don't want to completely smudge over the white sections because I'm starting to pick up a lot of those darker values that I put down, like with the pine green. I don't want those covering up my white highlights. So I'm trying to kind of go in between them. just until I get dark spots kind of blended out and then I'll wash out my brush again and I'll go over the white spots and tint those a little bit. If you're just tuning in, um, there's a good chance we might lose power because there is a storm of brewing outside. So I apologize if it suddenly just gets cut off. But I'm going to keep going. And I'm just going to go ahead and smooth that out back there. tint those highlights down a little bit. And just remember when you are using the mineral spirits, you do want to let your paper dry before you go back in and um, continue coloring over that. All right, so let's zoom back out and see what we got here. So it's starting to kind of resemble that highlight. It's kind of looking like a, I don't know, like a succulent at this point or that rosette. I think I do need to break up a little bit of this white, but that's okay. I like the base that we have started and I think that's a good starting point. Okay, let's see here. We'll go ahead and just fill in this point, and I think after that section, we will call it a night. So I'm gonna go in and start adding some, just kind of brick laying some little detail. This is more of a mid-tone green. It is a little darker, but it's not as dark as that. Just want a few little areas where it looks like there's some bumps. I'm kind of going in a little bit of a C shape. I would say C shapes and circles. In this section, it's a little bit of a sort of patchy. Got like 
some patchy sort of smudgy sort of texture so I'm just going to be real loose and sort of sloppy with my application and then as it gets towards this area we're getting more of that more of these little deep pockets of little c-shape lines and yes these are technical terms okay i'm going to go in with the lime green and i'm just going to go right on top of everything that i just did and this is going to add an extra base coat of some green It's a little bright, but we can always darken that up a little bit. But I do see a, a few flecks of some bright greens in this section. Oh, I did finally finish that big giant blue iris I was talking about in my previous video. And as soon as I get um, that photographed and um, I'll post it on my website and my social media, Instagram and stuff so you all can see my, my newest creation. Very excited and I hope it goes to a good home. All right, let's see. I'm going to pull out this sort of, uh, this one's the chromium green opaque, which is more of that olive green. And I'm just going to add some loose circles around with this color, adding to that sort of blotchy effect. Maybe circling around, maybe putting some squiggles. And all this combined together just makes some really good, really good um, layers, adds a lot of depth to your picture. And I'm just gonna go in with the white, add some little white spots here. And that is going to also sort of toned down when I go to blend it. And that'll help bring out some of those um, diffused reflections that we see. And there is sort of a stronger highlight over here. So I do want maybe a tighter grouping of the white spots. And then it diffuses as it gets away. This keeps going out of focus. Sorry about that. There we go. Hopefully it'll stay in focus so you can see what I'm doing. But I'm focusing on areas where it's already light. You can see where I've kind of squiggled around and the areas that I didn't get with the darker greens, I'm just gonna add a little white dot. I don't wanna overdo it. And now I'm gonna go back in with my, my brush here. It's still slightly damp. And I'm just gonna go right on top of all this and you can still see where I've put a little bit of that white it just blends together to create one layer that's got a lot of dimension and then we can go back in and do this again and put even more color and enhance and the cycle continues
doing um, a texture like this is it's really not that hard it just it does take a lot of patience but if you can think about it in layers where you're doing a gradient first then you're adding some texture like drawing in texture shapes then blending then repeating and then controlling your values at the same time it sounds like a lot but once you get it down it's it's not so bad so it kind of looks like mud but there's enough tooth in this paper where when this is dry i can go back and repeat what i just did and it'll still show up Okay, well, I think we are going to call this a night. And zoom out so we can see what we've got so far. And I'm thinking this is looking pretty good. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, next time I'm gonna try and get that jar open and we'll fix this part. But overall, um, We'll continue to working to work on this. I might work on a little bit this week and try and get this close to finishing because we still have the plate to do and any other changes I might want to make with the bottom portion. It's still not finished. Um, I, there's still a lot to do, but I don't want to take up too many weeks doing this project. So I think I will work on a little bit. It's gonna be the same pattern that I'm or same technique that I've been doing so if you don't see me working on the rest of this it's the same process you know just following along the pattern of the texture whether it's sort of that squashed C shape or if it's a circle shape um, or a dot or a line or whatever that is just look for those repeating patterns look for directions you know do those patterns go in a direction where it looks like lots of fishies going in a circle or something, you know, thinking about those types of ways to sort of get a picture in your mind of how to draw the texture and then just layer, 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 layer. So, um, yeah, I think we're going to call that a day. So I will see y'all next week. Let me just double check my calendar. Um, it's the 15th is next Tuesday, so I'll be streaming again next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 15th of August, and we'll just continue working on this. In the meantime, uh, feel free to watch any of my other videos. I've got a lot of fun different content on there, and start thinking about maybe what we could start for our next project. I am thinking about doing another live stream during the week, and um, I'm not entirely sure what I wanna do, but I at least wanna have two projects going on. So if you're not interested in one medium, you can look at my other video and draw something or paint something. Or um, if there's a particular subject matter that you want me to cover that you wanna learn about, um, let me know in the comments. All right, well, I will catch y'all next week and have a good day or evening. Have a good evening. Hi, Pebbles.